Advanced employee permissions are used when you need to limit the capabilities of an employee at your golf course. These permissions work by creating user roles. Once created, these user roles can be assigned to specific employees. We recommend that you set up user roles for each employee type at your facility. For example, you will want to create a user role for Pro Shop Clerk, or Assistant Pro, or Server in your restaurant, etc. Note that your current permissions will not be affected until you change them by clicking Save Changes. Now, let's walk through the steps to getting advanced permissions set up. First, go to the Employees module, then click the Edit Permissions button. Click the blue Add New button. You will need to enter the role name. For example, I'll be entering Pro Shop Clerk. Next, you'll need to select one of these three options for base roles. These are general roles that act as a template for you to edit from there. For example, the admin base role defaults to accessing everything in 4UP software. The manager base role does not allow the manager to delete sales. And the base employee role does not allow them to delete sales, access sales settings, give discount larger than the max discount, or edit other employees' roles. Once you have added the name and base role, go ahead and click Save Changes. You can go through and specify what permissions this user role will have. Note that each permission has a question mark tooltip next to it that will help you understand what that permission does. Many of the permissions are straightforward, but let's give a rundown of what they generally do. First, you will see the permissions that affect editing and accessing the customer database. The first permission is Edit Account Balance. With this turned on, the employee will have access to a customer's member balance and customer credit accounts. On the Manage Customer permission, an employee can either create, delete, or update a customer's profile. For example, an employee that can't create a customer will see a gray Create Customer button in the Customers page, which prevents them from adding a new customer. If they can't delete, then the delete options aren't available. And if they can't edit, then there's no way to change a customer's name or other information. Next, Edit Loyalty. This gives an employee permission to edit a customer's loyalty amount. Edit Customer Online Credentials gives an employee permission to update a customer's login credentials for their online account. Edit Price Class gives an employee permission to update the price class in a customer's profile. Next is the Gift Card section. These permissions apply to gift cards and punch cards. They give employees permission to create, delete, and update gift cards and punch cards. Next is the Inventory section. The first three permissions allow the employee to edit inventory cost, max discount, and quantity. Manage Inventory Item gives the employee permission to create, delete, or update an inventory item. Next is the Point of Sales section. Open Cash Drawer gives the employee permission to open the cash drawer without making a sale. Edit Green Fee or Cart Fee dropdown gives the employee permission to change the Green Fee and Cart Fee selection from the sales screen. Edit Item Discount and Edit Item Price give the employee permission to give a discount to an item and change the price of an item from the sales cart. Request Manager Override gives the employee permission to request a manager override. Edit Quick Buttons gives an employee permission to delete, add, and edit the quick buttons on the sales screen. Manage Sale gives an employee permission to delete a sale, delete without inputting a reason why, return a sale, or change sales settings. View Statistics gives an employee permission to view the statistics that are on the header of the sales module. Edit Taxable Sale gives an employee permission to check and uncheck the Taxable Sales checkbox. Next is the Report section. These permissions are very straightforward. Each permission gives the employee access to the associated report. For example, you could give employees access to the Employee Z-Out report. This report is a Z-Out report filtered to show only that employee's transactions. Next is the Statistics section. This only has one permission, which gives the employee permission to view the revenue on the header of the page. The last section is Tea Times. First, Create Tea Time Without a Customer gives an employee permission to save a tea time without adding a customer. As you can see, Manage Block, Event, League, Shotgun, Tea Time, and Tournament all do the same thing. They give the employee permission to create, delete, move, and update 
the reservation. Manage tea time check-in, create, gives the employee permission to check in a tea time. Delete gives the employee permissions to delete a tea time that has already been checked in. View statistics gives the employee permission to view the statistics at the header of the tea sheet. Now that you've selected permissions for this user role, let's scroll up to the top of the page and select Update Role. This will save the role and allow you to apply it to an employee. To apply it to an employee, go to the Employees page and select an employee. Then select the Roles tab. You will see the Employee Role option with a drop-down menu. Go ahead and click on the drop-down menu to view your user role options. Here we see the Pro Shop Clerk that we just created. Let's go ahead and select that. Note that you need to make sure that the employee has been given access to the correct modules here below in these basic permissions. Once all of that is set, once you click Save Changes, you're good to go. I recommend that you play around with these advanced permissions so that you can see everything they can do for you. Once you have them all set up, you can rest assured knowing that your employees have the access that they need.